welcome. Today we're in the studio with our good friend, Clifton Beck. Clifton, welcome. Hello, sir. Thank you. From HVAC Excellence and the ESCO Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, today we're going to be talking about some A2L updates. So we're in early February 2025. We've got the rest of this year still. A uh, little bit of lenience to get everything together. But you're one of the SMEs in the country on this topic. You do a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. You've just come back here after finishing a few this week. Um, what kind of information do you have for us that's kind of hot off the presses, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. I kind of relate this to like the, the Wild West of the United <laughs> States, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, when we look at what's happening, you know, we've really been working on this HFC phase down from an international perspective for about 15 years to get really serious with the phase down of HFCs. And that goes back to... Uh, R22, right? Yeah, it really, okay. it really gets into things like the uh, the Montreal Protocol, okay. right? It gets into things that, like the most recent thing that was signed into play was the AIM Act uh -huh. that was signed by President Trump, by the way. Okay. So the AIM Act was one of the things that really started the HFC phase-down schedule, and it was duplicated off from the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol. Okay. So we have two different things that started this whole HFC phase-down. You had a international treaty yeah. signed by the United States and then you had an act of Congress signed by President Trump. Sure. So we've got a couple different things that started this schedule and really what it's doing is it's saying that by 2036 we will have phased down uh -huh. almost completely all of our HFC refrigerants, including gotcha. what we are looking at as our newest generation of refrigerants, our R32 and R454B. Right. 454B is a blend of 32 and 1234YF. Yes. Both of those are HFC refrigerants at, at base. So those are actually on the schedule to be phased down by 2036. Okay, so phased down though, right? I think it's really important that we yeah. cover that because there's been a lot of misinformation that R32 is going away soon. Right, no, right. absolutely okay. will not. Can you take kind of just cover that piece a little bit sure. about what that phasing looks like? Yeah, so when we look at things like the technology transition rule, it stated that by January 1st of 2025, mm -hmm. our equipment manufacturers could not manufacture residential light commercial split systems with a GWP of 750, right? Okay. So when we look at the global warming potential, that immediately says, okay, well, 410's out of the way, right. right? So three times that or so. So December 31st of 2024 was the last production of R410A equipment that was Correct. designed as split system matchups, right? Mm -hmm. HRI ratings, ready to go, extended warranties when matched up, everything like that. So those are gone. Gotcha. So all of our equipment manufacturers have already transitioned their manufacturing from R410A over to either R32 or R454B. R454B does have a lower global warming potential because it is blended with that 1234YF. And that's where it comes into the industry because there are people that have said, uh, well, California is going to set a GWP of 500. And there was a time when they discussed that. Yeah. But now they've really looked at it as, you know, this whole 750 or 700 is really an ideal range for refrigerants. So the potential for us to see a GWP of 500, which would then then exclude R32 is actually not likely now. There have been a lot of things discussed in our industry that never really came to fruition. They were topics of conversation that never happened. Sure. So when we look at what's really happening in our industry, we're really focusing on that GWP set by the technology transition rule through the Environmental Protection Agency, right? They're the ones that set that rule up. Yeah. Now, we're also looking right now, because we have a new administration that is really reorganizing the way we look at a variety of things. A lot going on. Yeah, even <laughs> regulations, right? And so there's, yeah. there's things that could be potentially removed. But even that, though, when you have a, like a Congressional Repeal Act, you can go and look at things that have been signed into act within 60 days of the new administration. Yes. And there's only a few things. Subsection H of the AIM Act really is about the only one. So that's like refrigerant management. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with training, certification, or requirements of refrigerants. So even if those are repealed, it would take a while to happen, but it would still leave us with a refrigerant mandate. Yeah. Because most of the states have already said, we want to make sure. So we're going to go ahead and create our own expectations, our own standards. Yeah. So we have a variety of states that have already created their own almost duplicates of the technology transition rule to make sure that no matter what happens from either side of the aisle when we're talking politically, that the individual states are going to have their own 
requirements for refrigerants, and some are very strict. If you spend time looking at, like, say, the state of New York, uh, the state of New York is actually more aggressive at the HFC phase down than even our technology transition rule was. But we see that now currently, right? We yeah. see California, Absolutely. whether it's Washington, a refrigerant, whether it's emissions from vehicles. Yes. And then, yeah, Washington, New York. So that's really nothing new. It's not. Yeah. It, we really, we follow that regularly. And if you look at acts of Congress in the past, there's only been like 8% that have ever been repealed during yeah. this Congressional Repeal Act. And when we look at the states and what really is happening is we're trying to move some of that power from the federal level to the state. Sure. And so the states are just making sure that they have in play what those transitions look like. Yeah. So when we look at even the states like uh, Washington, they had, I think it was Washington, had a GWP of 700. So that may have been a little bit different than the technology transition yeah. rule, but it still allows for R32 and R454B as being that primary refrigerant in residential and like commercial. And when you look at any of the state legislation, they're all gonna be in that range. But you can also look at it and see that they are all still phasing out or phasing down by at yeah. least 85% all HFC refrigerants, including R32 and R454B, by 2034 or 2036. So sure. no matter whether we're looking at it as a international regulation, a federal regulation, or a state, we are going to be phasing HFC refrigerants down over the next decade. That's just how it is. Right. And so our manufacturers have invested a lot of time into converting their lines over to things like R32 and R454B. And so they're gonna continue manufacturing those until new regulations come into play in the next decade that would bring that GWP limit down. During that next phase down, we are going to probably see a low GWP where, as an industry, we're starting to estimate that 150 GWP okay. would be the next step that we would take, which, which would eliminate- pretty low. Very low, and <laughs> would eliminate R32 and R454B right. at the same time. But those are what we have until then. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and so, and another big point that you just talked about, R454B, is uh, made up of a large portion of R32, yeah, two right? Yeah, two-thirds. Yeah, so if one goes away, the other goes away. So absolutely. neither one of those are going away anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so we're going to be using those as long as refrigerants are allowed or legal, basically? Exactly. Okay. So when we look at, unless there's legislation around that 500 GWP, that could potentially eliminate R32 on itself, but that's not gonna happen. Yeah. We haven't really seen anything except for the one piece of legislation that was a proposal that was submitted through California that just didn't end up happening. Sure. So really when we look at it, the most likely next step that we'll make will be a very low GWP drop of like 150 or lower. And so for this next decade, we will see both refrigerants. R32 has been used by most of the world since we went to R410A. Cause you gotta right. remember R410A, 50% of R410A is R32, Yeah. right? We just weren't ready for the flammability in the 90s. Many parts of the world were. So we've been making R32 pieces of equipment for decades in other countries. Yeah. It's just here that we've now adopted that. So yeah, you'll see both of them. We'll see, uh, we're assuming a decade or so, uh, but by 2036 in some states like New York, 2034, we will see the phase down or phase out of all HFCs that we currently know. Which, will, if we get to that 100 or 100 ish level, yeah. it's going to wipe out refrigerant as we know for uh, the most part, or for what we currently see? Except for the HFO, the hydrofluoro olefin refrigerants, which okay. are a new class that have been out in the last few years. And so those are now really being tested in different pieces of equipment. That yeah. R1234YF, that is an HFO refrigerant, a hydrofluoro olefin. It's a modified HFC. It still has hydrogen, fluorine, and carbon. It just has a different bond between two of the carbon atoms, which gives it that olefin bond. So those HFOs have a very low global warming potential. That's why we went with those in automotive. So yeah. automotive uses our 1234YF now. So when we look at those kind of refrigerants, there is that potential of the HFO generation of refrigerants as being that next class. So most of those are single digit GWPs. But that one has its own issues, right? As they're finding in Europe. It, it does. And so if we think about any refrigerant, right? If if a chemical is released into the atmosphere and it breaks down quickly, mm -hmm. what does it break down into? 
And that's mm -hmm. always a question and concern of where does it go? Basically? Where does it go yeah. and what is it? And so there, there are concerns uh, in different places around the world. Even in the United States, we've actually looked at, you know, what chemicals are we wanting to have in use long term? Mm -hmm. And there are some refrigerants that have been looked at in that classification as PFAS chemicals. Yeah. In places around the world, the U.S. has not done that yet. So when we look at refrigerants, we always have to see what is the functionality of them long term. Yeah. How well do they work in compressors over time sure. going through the heat cycles and transfers. So yeah, we will always be looking at how the refrigerants respond, how they react. But when we look at GWP, we're going to continue reducing our GWPs as much as possible and finding the best refrigerants for those solutions. And so it's going to be the Wild West yeah. for the next decade or more for sure. But it kind of always has. Like, yeah. Really, our industry has went through so many transitions. <laughs> we look at refrigerant transitions, yeah. sear rating transitions, sure. sear two rating transitions, <laughs> HSPF transitions. We've always got things that are happening that changes our industry. And that's one of the reasons I love this industry. Yeah. And so for the education side, it's really important for us to know that these things are happening. I would encourage you to spend time with John Stone watching their videos, understanding what's happening in the industry, and just be aware that there's a lot of things to learn right now. Yeah, so the trend, we're in a transitional year. I'm glad you brought yes. that up, 2025. This is the last year that distributors are allowed to sell and the contractors are allowed to install, install. full systems. Correct. Full systems of R410. Can you uh, talk a little bit about what is classified as a quote unquote full system and 2026, January 1 on, what type of components, parts, pairing will be allowed and what will not be. Yeah, that is a very interesting one when you start looking at particularly the transit, the technology transition rule that defines systems like you'd want right. to because we have two <laughs> different followings based on what the equipment, whether it's whether it's built in the field or whether it's built as an assembly at a factory yeah. pre-charged. Either way, when we look at that, it really comes down to a system, right? So we have to have some R410A equipment in our inventory for things like warranty, sure. for things as individual component replacement without being a system. But if we yeah, think about repairs. that, repairs, mm -hmm. absolutely. What if I have a system that maybe it didn't have the warranty, it's just a few years old, but I need to replace this coil, it's a R410A system. Yeah. I can't install a new R410A system no matter what, but do I have replacement coils for them? Absolutely. Sure. Can I still work on an R410A system? 100%. Yeah. We're going to be working on those for decades probably. We still have still. 22 systems all over the place. Exactly right? <laughs> right. So it really comes down to you won't be able to register a new system. Mm -hmm. right? You will not be able to have an outdoor unit and the indoor coil as a match system with an AHRI rating registered through the manufacturer for the typically an extended warranty. Sure. Right? We won't be able to install systems. We will have components available though. We've already seen some of our manufacturers like ADP has manufactured coils that would work for R410A, R32, or R454B oh, okay. because yeah. really they're the same refrigerant pressures, very similar, slightly up for R454B, slightly yeah. down. For it's very similar to each other. So we'll have our R410A individual components around, mm -hmm. but yeah, R410A systems, we've got 11 months now left yeah. and that's it. And then we will not be able to sell and install new R410A systems. Full systems. Full so, systems. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. VRV is going to be different. They haven't extended one year past that, but yeah. Okay. But you got to think too, all of our manufacturers have stopped manufacturing of R410A. Yeah. They're done. So whatever's left in the distributor locations, that's all that we will have past next year. Sure. So, we're going to probably run out of R410A before we get to the end of the year. Yeah, and that's the way it's looking, at least for us exactly. right now. Except for warranty items. Um, so you're, you're attending a ton of events this spring, yeah. talking about all of this material. You bet. Uh, where are all you going to be at? Yeah, well, Sunday we'll be heading to AHR to spend the week there doing a lot of, I think i got 25 podcasts scheduled with different manufacturers discussing the changes in technologies, okay. the changes in refrigerants, what the future looks like. We're going to be looking at that from residential, commercial, industrial, variety of different perspectives. We will have uh, pipe trades as well. We'll have mm -hmm. EGIA.
A. We will have our conference in March. So yeah. there's a lot of things happening in the industry, and we usually do that February through April is a lot sure. of conference time in our industry where, where we learn about what things are for the next year. So yeah, over the next couple of months, I'll have a lot more information on where we're gonna be from the manufacturer side. All right, and if people wanna get a hold of you, ask you yeah. questions, get your material, where the, can they find you? Absolutely, you can go to our website, which is escogroup.org. You wanna email me, it is cbeck at escogroup.org, and we would love to help you with all your training needs. Awesome, it's always good to have you back. Same Thanks here. for stopping by today. Yeah. Good luck with all your travels here this spring, and Appreciate we're excited it. to hear all the updates when you get back. Absolutely. We'll see you then.